الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد وعبدت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with those things that please him tabarak wa ta'ala أحبت في الله In a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam He said Two hungry wolves sent against the sheepfold will not do more damage to it than a man's eagerness for wealth and prestige does to his religion and this is collected in Ahmed and Musnad Imam Ahmed in Tirmidhi and Abu Ya'la. And Imam Tirmidhi said it is uh, Sahih, uh, Hassan Sahih. The Prophet ﷺ was explaining that the damage done to a person's religion by his eagerness for wealth and prestige is no less than the damage done by two hungry wolves to a flock of sheep. This is quite obvious, for if a man's religion is sound, he will not have any eagerness for those things. Once the heart has tasted the sweetness of true servitude to Allah and love for him, nothing else will be dearer to him than that, and nothing else will take priority. Ahabatifillah, this is Shaykh al-Salam ibn Taymiyyah mentioning about this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In which the Prophet ﷺ was explaining to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the a person's eagerness and wealth or eagerness for wealth and prestige, for status, for wealth and fame and things of this nature, uh, is its relationship by craving and having uh, this desire for wealth and status, that how the damage that this does to one's religion is similar to the way if two hungry wolves were to corner a flock of sheep, meaning we know that they would wreak havoc. Because in that similitude, if you were to have two hungry wolves that are on a hunt, or a pack of wolves, for example, they may not kill everything that they're able to attack. They may attack some, and it may get away. So they're just going to inflict chaos. There'll be carnage. There'll be some bleeding, some injured, some perhaps injured uh, permanently, uh, some fatally, and they're going to eat what they're able to eat and take, you know, take away and eat what they're able to eat. And I don't know enough about wolves if they bury their what's left over or what. But we know that they're known for uh, being very stern predators, if you will. So that shows us this similitude that the Prophet ﷺ made. It shows us that seeking fame and wealth are things which more often than not affect your religion. And in fact, if they become your soul love and your desire that they actually can destroy your religion. For example, the more you crave wealth, the less you're going to have in your heart for the remembrance and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you'll be busy with looking for ways to acquire wealth. Likewise, that craving and that desire for status to be famous. And think of how that affects the one who desires to gain fame with regards to the religion. He or she uh, uses the various means in this day and age, for example, so social media, social media to, uh, to acquire position and status, perhaps wealth and other things. This is an incredibly dangerous 
a thing and can be very destructive because at the end of the day, no matter how many followers or how many people who subscribe or how many people are on the Instagram account, you may have a horrible account with Eliza with Joe. And it may be due to that very reason. Perhaps you could have even been doing a lot of good, but the intention was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see that how those things, how craving the delights of this dunya can be such a destruction for our akhirah and how it comes at the expense of the akhirah. That doesn't mean you don't need to strive to be the best that you can in this dunya uh, if you you know, have business plans and an excellent business model and you're going to school to become educated, to pursue uh, worldly things. This is, this, it's not problematic, this. But it's problematic is how it consumes your heart. The relationship with the qalb. You know, does this consume your heart? Does this uh, destroy your intention when you do good deeds? For example, the one who does things in order to gain fame uh that d does uh, things especially dawah wise you know they do entertainment value dawah or they just only deal with controversial controversial issues in order to get subscribers all of that comes down to the intention all of that comes down or a part of that comes down to the in intention because it could also be an issue of the wasila as well, meaning the means. Meaning the means could be ghayr mashru'. You could be trying to achieve dawah, uh, but your means for doing it is uh, not uh, is is un-Islamic. For example, you could be doing, for example, magical tricks, or you know, uh, doing things, you know, Islamic jokes, I guess or whatever the case may be, and your intent could actually be that you want people just to uh, tune in and get some Islamic value. But the problem in that situation was the wasila. It was the means. The means was un-Islamic. Uh, another person could actually have excellent means. You know, they could be really teaching people great value, great content from the book and the sunnah, but their intention... So, and their intention could have been on fame, and it could have been on acquiring wealth, and it could have been on acquiring all kind of things in the dunya. So that took away from the value of their da'wah. The people may never know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So that could be a source of their destruction. So think about the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the three doing the greatest deeds in Islam uh, that a person can do, some of the greatest actions that a person can do as far as the ibadah. But what was the end result because of their corrupt intention? So the Prophet ﷺ said, In al awwal nas yukda alayhi yawm al qiyamah, rajalun ustushida fu utiya bihi fa'arafu ni'amu fa'arafaha, faqala fa ma'amaltu fiha, qala, qataltu fika hatta ustushita, hatta ustushitu, qala kadabt, wa lakinna ka fa'alta li yaqal huwa, so the Prophet ﷺ mentions, the first person, he mentions a, a man who was uh, martyred, you know, he's killed, fighting in the cause of Allah. And he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked, what did you do? And, the, and he will say, uh, I, I fought until I was killed, you know, until I was martyred. Allah the Almighty will say, Kadab, you lied. Rather, you did it so that the people would say you were brave. And it was said, meaning that you got your reward in this life because you wanted the people to praise you, and so they praised you. You know, the people are going to say after you died, <laughs> what a great mujahid. MashaAllah. There's going to be YouTube pages after him. There's going to be clips of what he was doing and this and that and the other. He got what he wanted. It was a praise of the people. It was said about you. Then Allah is going to command him to be thrown in his face in his fire. Can you imagine being martyred in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The highest, one of the highest deeds you can do. 
Subhanallah, we know all the, the fada'il of, the, of, of the, the, the shuhada. But this actually brought him to the hellfire. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ وَالرَّجِلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمُ وَعَلَّمُهُ وَقَرَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَقَرَى الْقُرْآنِ قال فما عملت فيها قال تعلمت العلم وعلمته وقرات فيك القران قال كذبت ولكن لكنك فعلت لي قال هو عالم وقرات وقرات لان يقال هو قارئ فقد قيل ثم امر به فصحب على وجهه حتى القي في النار وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم so the second one is the one who's brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he'll be asked, what did he do? And he'll say, you know, I, I read the Quran for you. Meaning I was a beautiful reciter and from the Hufad. And, you know, people had my tapes and this and that and the other. I mean, this is, uh, you know, the meaning. And I was in Alam. You know, you know, I was a scholar. And, you know, I, I did this for your sake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, will say, Kiddab, lakinaka fa'alta liyakal, huwa alimun, huwa qari'un. So Allah will say that you lied, but you did it so that the people would say you were a person of knowledge, you're an alim, or you are a, uh, uh, a beautiful reciter. Faqad qil, and it was said, meaning that they got their reward in this life, the people were praising them. Maybe they got nice jobs, they got wealth, they married women, they got great status. You know, all the households had their tapes, everyone praised them. MashaAllah, look at Sheikh so and so, uh, Alam so and so, Talib al Alam so and so. Faqad qil, so they got their reward in this life. Then he'll be, uh, uh, you know, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, makes it known, subhanAllah, he makes it known to Barak Ta'ala that you're a liar and claims you're a liar and humiliates you in that maqam and then you're dragged in the hellfire. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ All of this has to do with the intention. And the third one, وَالرَّجِلٌ وَاسَعَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَأَطَعُهُ مِنْ أَسْنَافِ مَا الْكُلِّ And the third one was a man who was given immense wealth. He was given every kind of wealth. You know, and we can already imagine all the various types of wealth. Think about those people who have stocks, bonds, uh, property, uh, cars, boats, just wealth of every kind of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, everything. He was given every kind of wealth. So, you know, he was brought, he'll be brought before and his, his, his ni'mah will be made known and, and he will acknowledge it. And then he'll be asked, uh, What did you do? You know, what, what did you do for, uh, for me, for my sake? قال ما من سبيل ما من سبيل انفقتو فيها إلا and faktu fiha luck. Subhanallah. He says, There isn't a way of spending that I spent, except that it's a way that you love. Illa and faktu fiha luck. Except that except that it's something that, that I did it for your sake. Meaning he might have spent it on all kinds of khair, all kinds of good. Fakal kidabt. And it will be and Allah will say you lied. Rather you did it so that the people would say, Hua Jawadun. He was generous. Fakar kil. And it was said. Fu umira bi uh fa wajihi fumma ulkiya finnar. So then he will be uh commanded and dragged on his face into the then dragged on his face into the in the fire. Uh, the, the, the point of mentioning this hadith Rasulullah is that this hadith shows us the danger of a corrupt intention and how that can destroy your deeds and destroy your Islam destroy your relationship with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy everything in fact it can just destroy you so do your best to always try to uh, purify your intention 
in what you're doing in your worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.